So Amy Klobuchar just uh, walking out the door right here, uh, uh, right over here on the other side of the camera moments ago after shaking some hands and making her case to the American people just 48 hours ahead of the South Carolina primaries. And according to the latest polling, take a look at the numbers tonight. This is the latest Fox News poll, or this is Monmouth exactly, and then you're going to have Fox News polls right after that. Joe Biden in the lead in South Carolina, but Biden for the first time no longer leading the Democratic race nationally. According to these Fox News polls that just came out tonight, that title now belongs to Bernie Sanders at 31 percent. Next up is Biden at 18 percent. You can see how the numbers go down from there. Bernie's status as front runner is bolstered by this new data. He is trouncing his Democratic opponents in online attention. An interesting measure. So the only person in the 2020 race who is beating Bernie in terms of online attention, that would be President Trump by a margin of more than two to one. South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham knows a thing or two about how Saturday's primary in the Palmetto State is shaping up, and he joins me tonight. Senator Graham, thank you very much. Great to have you with us tonight. Thanks, Martha. I appreciate it. So tell me what you think right now about this South Carolina primary. Do you think that Joe Biden is in a good position to win it? He basically guaranteed that he would on the debate stage. <laughs> yeah, he'll win. I think he'll win by double digits. Uh, Jim Clyburn helping mm -hmm. Joe Biden. Uh, African-American Congressman Clyburn is a really well, well thought of, highly respected member of Congress. About 60 yeah. percent of the primary electorate will be African-Americans and Joe is beloved in the community and he will win decisively but I think it's too little too late for Joe. This is Bernie's race to lose right now. Wow. Um, here's Joe Biden talking about Bernie Sanders at a Charleston, South Carolina town hall. Watch this. I think Bernie is a decent, honorable man who means what he says. And I think, but I think it's going to be, it's not enough just to win, beat the president. The next president has to be able to win back the Democratic Senate. It's a criticism of whether or not you think you're going to be able to help elect a Democratic senator here against Lindsey Graham, which I'm going to help do. <laughs> So what do you make of that argument? And I just want to put up on the screen also, this is a very interesting, three and in four Democrats say that they would support a socialist for president, according to the Gallup poll. Seventy-six percent of those voters say, yes, I would vote for a socialist, Senator Graham. Well, you know, that says a lot about the Democratic primary, but it's a slice of the political pie. Let me tell you, a Sanders candidacy is great news for President Trump. It is great news for Republicans in the House and the Senate. Uh, we have a Democrat representing the 1st Congressional District in South Carolina, Joe Cunningham. Bernie Sanders is his worst nightmare. Joe Biden is a wonderful man. He would be a formidable general election uh, opponent for President Trump. I think he would probably help the down-ballot Democrats more than most people running. Uh, it looks like uh, Bernie is going to win the nomination unless something dramatically changes. But if you're a down-ballot Democrat, in the Midwest and the South, Bernie Sanders is your worst nightmare. I think we take the House back with Bernie for sure. Interesting. Um, and there may be a twist to come, as you say, unless something happens. That's sort of what you know <laughs> rolls tuned. off everybody's <laughs> lips because we all know that we see a lot of twists and turns in these things, and yeah. we'll see. Um, moments ago, I spoke with Senator Klobuchar, and I asked her about the 20-week abortion ban, which was which went which failed uh, in yeah. the Senate, which is a, a bill that you sponsored. And here yeah. here was her response. Let's play that. You weren't there for that vote. So would you have voted to, to ban abortion after 20 weeks of pregnancy? Well, I would have voted with the Democrats on that because I think uh, Roe v. Wade is now the law of the land. And a lot of these bills um, are attempts to change that. Um, and I would, if I was uh, president, I would work with Congress to actually try to codify Roe v. Wade into law. So at what point do you believe that, that life begins? If 20 weeks, post-20 weeks is, is acceptable, at what point do you think life begins? Again, I follow Roe v. Wade. <laughs> what do you think of that answer, Senator? Well, we're one of seven nations in the world that allow abortion on demand at 20 weeks. That's the fifth month in the birthing process. And this was my bill called the Pain Capable Bill. Uh, if you operate on a baby at 20 weeks to save its life during the birthing process, you have to pro provide anesthesia because the baby can feel pain. Can you only imagine what it's like for the baby to be ripped apart? There's a reason only seven nations on the planet allow abortion at 20 weeks. I uh, like Amy. I think she's acquitted herself well. I think she's going to hit a wall in South Carolina. She does well among older white voters. And 
uh, but she's done a very good job. But quite frankly, the Democratic Party is held captive to the most radical pro-abortion people in the country. And if she voted otherwise, it'd cut all her money off. You know, it seems that the, for the moderates, you know, that that position of your bill seems like something that moderates would be getting behind. You would um, think. And as you point out, <laughs> you know, only North Korea and China and a few other countries Iran. have the same rule on this that we do. Yeah. But it, it, you know, what she said was she sees it as as an attempt on your part yeah. and others who were supportive of it to start chipping away at Roe v. Wade. Is she right about that? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, she believes in science. I believe in science. I believe global warming is real. I just want a rational solution. The Green New Deal is nuts. But uh, look at the science of the birthing process. Science tells us that at 20 weeks, the fifth month in, of the pregnancy, a child can feel pain and the nerve ends are well developed and to operate on a child to save its life, you have to provide anesthesia because it would hurt the child during the operation. Can you imagine what it's like to be aborted at 20 weeks? So the science tells us this, uh, this unborn child okay. is well developed at 20 weeks and can feel pain. So let me ask you another question uh, on foreign policy before I let you go. We, we also asked about Iran and whether yeah. or not in retrospect the killing of Qassam Soleimani uh, was a good idea. It seems that things, at least for the time being, have quieted down a bit. There was a lot of uproar about World War III when the president made <laughs> that move. Um, what do you think at this point, looking back at it? Well, I think it was a deterrence, but uh, Amy Klobuchar is a good friend. She's very very nice, very capable, but she supported the Iran deal. You want to create World War III, allow the Iranians to get a nuclear weapon. That's where they're headed under the Obama deal. Thank God uh, President Trump pulled out of the deal. They were on a path to get a nuclear weapon. I'm glad we got out of the deal. The Arabs will want a nuke of their own, and one day they will use it. The Ayatollah is a religious Nazi. Obama misjudged who the Ayatollah was. They gave him $150 billion. He's dismembered the Mideast. So the biggest mistake of the Obama years was giving the Ayatollah $150 billion of sanctions relief and not dismantling his nuclear program. And Amy voted for that like every other Democrat. And what Bernie Sanders said about uh, the Prime Minister of Israel makes my blood boil. Bibi is the longest serving prime minister in the history of Israel. He has been elected by the Israeli people for over a decade. He's a good, strong man. He's not a racist. It says more about Bernie than it does Bibi. And in Bernie's world, the radical Islamists are the victims and uh, Israel's the oppressor. It's upside down politics. Well, uh, these are some of the issues I think that are going to define this campaign as we move through uh, the coming year and move towards November. Senator, always good to see you. Senator Lindsey Graham, thank you very much, sir.